Hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar on how QuickBooks users can strengthen their business operations. Uh, we've got a ton of great content prepared for all of you today, but before we jump into that, as well as introductions, I did just want to do some housekeeping uh, to kick things off. So first and foremost, a really popular question that we always get on webinars is, will it be recorded? Um, the answer is yes, so you can definitely expect to get the recording, whether you stay for the whole duration of the webinar or just a little bit um, in your inbox sometime this week. Um, so you'll get that shortly. Um, as well, some of you might have heard that we're actually doing a raffle on today's call, so if you do um, stay to the end, you'll be entered to win an Amazon gift card uh, worth $100, so um, definitely might be worthwhile spending the next 30 minutes with us. And uh, beyond that, we will have a formal Q&A at the end, but if any questions come up kind of throughout the webinar, feel free to chat us and we'll do our best to kind of uh, take questions as they come. Um, so with that, um, I'll start by introducing myself. My name is Elish McCann, and if you've been on any of uh, Methods webinars before, I might be a bit of a familiar face. Um, I lead our SEO and content here. If you're not familiar with Method, we're best known for being um, the number one automation tool for QuickBooks users. Um, so we've got tons of reviews on apps.com if you wanna check us out, um, but kind of our bread and butter is really helping QuickBooks users extend the life of their accounting software so they don't have to move to an ERP and kind of um, automate a lot of you know unique workflows to your business. So we'll jump into that a little bit later, um, but next I will pass it over to Alex for an introduction. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Alex Reed. I'm the Chief Commercial Officer with vSimple. Um, we'll get more into vSimple's role in all of this uh, as we get into the presentation, but in essence, vSimple builds mission control for the internal processes that organizations uh, have to execute every day. We, we call it the messy middle. We can sit between a CRM and ERP and you know, tackle all of those cross-departmental and cross-functional workflows that involve communication, collaboration, documentation, and give it a much cleaner way to work. And uh, we're excited to, to share more how we're working with Method and uh, with Devin at, at Mid Florida Material Handling as we get into the presentation today. Thanks, Alex. Uh, and I know you have another vSimple team member on the line here. So Henry, do you wanna introduce yourself? Sure, hi everyone. My name's Henry Lynch, I'm the CTO at v simple thanks henry and then very fun and exciting we actually have a joint uh, v simple and method customer on the line um so devin's here as well devin do you want to say a few words hey good morning everyone uh i'm devin ahern operations manager here at mid florida material handling um yeah we're a material handling distributor so we sell forklifts pallet rack things like that for your warehouse and we actually use method and v simple together uh, as well as QuickBooks. So uh, yeah, looking forward to sharing a little bit about that. Great, thanks so much. All right, so with that, let's dive into our first question, uh, which is kind of gonna tackle why is automation important um, for kind of bettering your operations? Um, so with that one, let's start with Alex. What are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, you know, I think automation means a lot of different things to different people. When you say the word, your mind immediately goes to uh, back of the house, warehouse operations, sorters, conveyors, cartners, um, you know, things that are picking and packing automatically. Uh, but the way vSimple tends to think about automation is all of those repetitive mundane tasks that we have to do in office work every day, the boxes we have to check, the communication we have to send, the tasks we have to assign and reports we have to build. And you know, for us, we, we really focus on that end to help companies operate more efficiently and profitably. Um, but it's not just the obvious bottom line benefit that you think about of, oh, okay, we're saving time uh, and money, uh, but there's there's a couple of other byproducts of, of setting up that automation. One is a much better employee experience if you don't have to focus on, again, all of those repetitive tasks, um, but much more accurate work, um, which is gonna end up leading to a better customer experience. I, I think we're all familiar with the phenomenon of the customer calling and saying, hey, where is this thing? And now I've got to dig through a bunch of emails and, and other document you know, folders and things like that. Um, what we focus on is making sure those processes move through, uh, you know, as effortlessly as possible. And then when it makes sense, uh, if we say, okay, every time this happens, 
this thing needs to happen or this person needs to be informed. Um, that's where we can really build in simple automations that uh, can really add up over time. And so I think everybody benefits um, when you're smart about automation on, on the office side of, of operations because, um, again, things go faster. Uh, there's fewer errors, fewer bottlenecks, uh, better transparency and visibility, both internally and for the customer. Um, and so I think there's a, a ton of reasons there to, to focus on that. And, you know, again, when we look back decades um, before us, so much of automation has been focused on physical automation. And so we're really excited because I think people are really starting to pay attention to the complexity of office work and saying some of this stuff should be a little bit faster and more straightforward. And, you know, that's where we come in and we work with partners like Method um, to see which of those processes we can make better. Totally. Thanks, Alex. I can't agree more. It's never a good look when your customer is kind of coming in and correcting you. So automation is a great way to kind of overcome those awkward moments. Um, Devin, I know you had some thoughts on well as well. Do you mind sharing? Yeah, and and everything Alex said is exactly why we looked, you know, towards products like Method to be simple to automate things. Uh, you know, we had a ton of problems here in Mid Florida with lost paperwork. Everything was manually entered if we got an order. Okay, so the customer signs an estimate. Now we have to manually enter it into our accounting system. Then we print another sales order out and then we pass that around the office and it gets lost or the information on there was incorrect because it was manually entered to begin with. So now we've kind of automated that entire process. Um, and the biggest benefit has been easy responses to customers. Before, like Alex said, people would call in, what's going on with my order? Uh, we'd have to email around you know, call to our other office. Now it's all easily available. Um, so customers are happier and our employees too, because it's not so stressful finding information. Totally. I think another thing that's great about, you know, using automation as a crucial part of your operations is you also get not only data accuracy, which we've already talked about a little bit, um, but better security of your information, right? Um, you know, with return to work, people are working in their offices again. You don't want, let's say, like a customer's, you know, credit card number, for instance, on a sticky note on your desktop. That's not very secure, obviously, and opens up a lot of risks for not only your customer, but also you as an employee and also your business. Um, so some other things to definitely keep in mind there. All right, I think we're going to move on to our second question here, uh, which is how can QuickBooks users really enhance their um, operations? So there's some great kind of features within QuickBooks, like um, you know banking feeds are a great automation that QuickBooks offers out of the box. They have some really powerful profit and loss reports, which obviously really key um, in this economy, and some cash flow kind of predictions, which are all super helpful in terms of you know accounting management, but unfortunately that's kind of where QuickBooks stops and other tools like the simple and method kind of come in. Um, so with that, I'm going to pass it over to Henry. Sure. Um, so QuickBooks is great accounting software. That's their bread and butter, but there's a lot of other tools that you need to run your business. And so products like Method and vSimple can come in and provide a no-code platform where you can still use QuickBooks and make the most of that investment, but run your other parts of your business in an automated fashion, um, the same way you would your accounting processes within QuickBooks. That's great, Henry. Um, I know too, if you're looking for tools to kind of enhance QuickBooks, they have an awesome ecosystem on apps.com um, where you can kind of, you know, view different areas of functionality and you know read reviews from real users um, to kind of help you navigate that ecosystem. Um, Devin, I know at Mid Florida you guys have you know real life experience uh, with this. Do you mind sharing with the audience kind of any tips you have? Yeah, I think you know one of the biggest things was we're a smaller company. We have about 30 employees. I didn't think you know solutions like Method or Be Simple were out there that were simple enough that a company that doesn't have a dedicated IT department could roll out. Um, it was a lot easier than I thought. Not, I ran the both projects to implement them with uh, vSimple and Method, and I don't have any kind of you know IT or programming background. Um, so kind of don't be afraid to look into some of these. They're a lot simpler than you might think, um, and just a huge impact um, on our business once we finally did get them get them rolled out. So. 
yeah, don't be afraid. Look into some of these and, you know, call around and, and see what you can find because it really helped us. Great takeaway. I feel like all too often people are really nervous about automation, about it maybe making them redundant and stuff like that. But automation is really here to kind of foolproof your operations um, and, you know, clear up your workday so you can focus on those high value tasks that you actually enjoy doing versus, let's say, paperwork and, and data entry. Um, so that's great. Thanks so much, Devin. Uh, and right, gonna... one, one thing I forgot to mention that now I'm seeing on the slide, sorry, um, is you don't want your whole business in your accounting system either. So there's a security component here where if you can have your sales folks work out of a method CRM, they no longer need direct access to that accounting system. Um, similarly with, with other apps that might provide point solutions for your field service team or other departments so that you can have them get the QuickBooks data they need via an integration rather than that direct access to those um, kind of critical accounting um, processes. Totally. I think two point solutions are interesting because I think QuickBooks users often get to this stage of growth where the next alternative is an ERP, um, which is so clunky, very difficult to implement, and very expensive. Um, so I think apps.com provides a great avenue for those point solutions that Henry mentioned um, for you to kind of fill the gaps that you need to um, as you grow um, without fully committing to you know, a system like an ERP. Um, any other thoughts from the panel on this one? Cool, let's move on then. Um, so, yeah. Oh, sorry, I thought I heard a question. Oh, I was just gonna add, yeah, no, I was just gonna add one quick thing. I think the other uh, cool thing about integrating with QuickBooks into more of your operational software or CRM is financial data tends to be an end state of how we performed. Um, when you can overlay that with your operational data to show what it took to actually get to that end state and you understand the inputs and not just the output, then you really have the opportunity to optimize your business um, versus trying to understand, okay, we had a good month, but why did we have a good month? Or you know, maybe it was a bit more challenging. Um, and so having those things married up, I think gives better business insights to organizations. That's a great point. Thanks, Alex. All right, with that, I think we're gonna move on. Um, and our next question is on how do integrations and no-code tools kind of support QuickBooks users on their journey towards hopefully holistic automation. So I know these terms might be new to some of you guys on the call, so we're just gonna do a quick breakdown of both um, just so everybody's on the same page. Um, so the first thing that we wanna cover is just what is a software integration? Um, so this is just essentially a connection between, you know, whether it's QuickBooks and Method or Method and Be Simple, it's some sort of connection between the two tools so that data can kind of update between them. Um, sometimes integrations are, you know, one way, so from QuickBooks to Method, or bi-directionally, so for method to QuickBooks as well. Um, so that's just kind of a, a little definition to kick us off. And then the other thing that we're gonna look at is no code, which um, you might not be familiar with. So no code is any kind of software application that you can actually um, personalize um, without coding knowledge. So traditionally in software, a tool like QuickBooks, for example, if you wanted to make any changes to um, QuickBooks, you'd have to know how to code it on the back end um, and be able to roll that out, uh, where no code kind of empowers different users, even without coding knowledge, um, to tailor the software to their needs. So whether that's building custom apps or um, custom workflows, all this is kind of possible in the back end of a tool like Method uh, without knowing uh, coding knowledge. So oftentimes you'll see them leveraging drag and drop technology, um, which is a lot easier to navigate than let's say JavaScript or something like that. So that's kind of just to get everyone on the same playing field. Um, but with that, I am curious about the panel's thoughts on this. Um, Henry, I know you had some thoughts on kind of connecting workflows and systems. Do you want to kick us off with that? Sure. So there are a lot of no code tools out there. Um, and essentially what that means is there's an admin panel that any user could go to and add a field, um, create a formula, that sort of thing. And being able to connect these these different no code tools like like method, like be simple together is really powerful as well because you can start to really pick solutions that are are the best in class for a specific use case, 
but bring them together in as, as a full platform for your business um, without having to have a team of developers or a big custom development project with a third party. And Devin, I know you have kind of firsthand experience leveraging both integrations and no-code tools. Uh, anything you can kind of say as the end user of both these kind of? Yeah, I, I kind of, sure. Yeah, I kind of touched on it earlier about how much easier I thought it, how much easier it was than I thought it would be. Um, it, it's really cool. Like as someone with no coding background, um, you know, vSimple and Method, they both kind of get you started. But if you need to make small changes, uh, you know, as your business operations change or you, you know, add a new product line or, you know, anything changes, it's very easy to make quick changes that don't cost you any additional money, which that matters to me. Um, you know, a lot of the, if I had to hire this out to someone that's going to program, it's going to be ridiculous amounts of money. I can go on the admin panel, add a couple quick fields, and then we're back in action with the stuff we needed. Um, so, yeah, I just didn't know. You know, as someone that's not in this space, I didn't know stuff like this existed. So this was brand new to me. And I, I think that's probably true for a lot of people. Definitely. Thank you, Devin. Any other thoughts on this one? I think Devin brought up a really interesting point there around hiring out, whether it's a third party or your IT department. But I've seen so many organizations try to tackle things with customization, whether done in-house or out of house. and the challenge with that versus a no-code tool is somebody has to maintain that legacy code base. And if it's one-off versus a more mature product that's used by many, it's a lot more risky to the organization. So companies may think that by going and building this custom software uh, that they're, you know, kind of safeguarding their, their, their property, their ideas, their information. But in fact, I think the no-code stuff is, is not only more user-friendly, but really robust and, and um, you know, gives some protection to the organization from the code being, you know, more fallible. Totally. It's definitely a good way to kind of de-risk because if you just lose your one developer who you're contracting out to, you might be a little bit screwed where if you're investing in a platform, uh, a lot better long term. So thanks for that. All right, and just on the next slide, we're gonna share some examples of no-code tools. Um, if you are new to kind of the space or the term, uh, you can take a look kind of at some options here uh, and explore those. And I think in just a couple minutes, Henry's actually going to demo to us um, kind of the method, the simple integration. Uh, I think actually using some of Devin's businesses kind of workflows, uh, which is really exciting. Uh, but just before we do go into that, um, we did just have another example of something that's possible in a no-code tool like method, uh, which I believe Devin's uh, business is actually leveraging here. So something that we found in terms of our you know, customer base of QuickBooks users is oftentimes they want an e-signature or some type of signature um, for approvals on things like estimates, um, but that's not something that QuickBooks does natively. Um, so with method, um, you're able to kind of pull in this signature widget into your estimates within method that sync back and forth bi-directionally to QuickBooks. Um, so a really handy way to not only capture a signature, um, but also grab that uh, approval from the customer um, and have you know, all those notifications, whether it's sending the estimate, whether it's notifying someone on your own internal team that the estimate has been approved and work can now start. Um, really handy way to kind of, you know, uh, get those estimates approved. So just a little note on that. And with that, I will pass it over to Henry for his demo. Let me just make you the presenter here. Um, all right, Henry, you should be good to screen share. And if in the meantime, anyone has any questions, um, feel free to kind of chat us. Awesome, can you see my screen? Yeah, looks good. Great, um, Devin, feel free to hop in as I walk through this, um, but just wanted to give a, an overview of how Method, QuickBooks, and vSimple are, are working together for mid-Florida. And really that starts with that e-signature functionality. Um, where there's a, a portal where mid Florida's customers can sign an estimate. Um, this, this is part of methods functionality. And when that estimate is signed in that portal, it is um, converted into a sales order. So I'll pull up an example there. So here's an estimate hopping over to an example of a sales order. 
You can see it's converted from one of those estimates due to that signature coming in, and that also kicks off a sync to vSimple. So method has taken care of um, putting that estimate together, garnering that e-signature, and then has that connection back to QuickBooks um, as well. And the piece of the puzzle that, that vSimple is bringing to the table is helping organize all of the workflow that happens um, once a new order um, needs to be processed. So I can show you what one of those records looks like. Um, and this, this record is created automatically via the integration. So if we scroll down here to the beginning of this order, you can see vSimple's created this record via the automation with method. And it's pulled over all of those things like customer name, billing address, and then even those line level equipment details as well. Um, there's also a lot of information that lives in vSimple that's not in method that helps organize the vSimple workflow. So things like payment terms, what payments have been received, um, tracking the installer that's on that project, any relevant rental equipment, um, any freight that they need to organize. Um, they're managing that within um, the vSimple um, interface. And then they also have access to an activity stream that acts sort of as an audit and communication history for, for this order. So all the relevant documents, purchase orders, um, communication internally, those status changes, all of that can be organized on this activity stream here. And then if I just log in and go to the vSimple's homepage, I'll see role-based views here at the top that um, each department can use to organize what's sitting on their plate at any given moment, how long has it been sitting there, um, and what, what next step needs to happen. So for example, right now there are two orders sitting um, in coordinator review, which means um, the coordinator needs to pick this up and start moving it through the next steps in the process, which are an accounting review, um, getting it ready for payment, ordering, um, and fulfillment. And as this record gets updated, we'll see that move from two to one and then into that accounting review bucket and notifications for, for those relevant users are built in here as well. So I know if I'm in charge of the coordinator review status, I can see exactly what's on my plate, get notifications when new ones are coming in. Um, and I can visualize that data either in this card view that I have here, um, more of a table um, kind of Excel sort of view, or as a, as a Kanban um, board as well, if I'm responsible for multiple stages of the process. And then on the back end, we also can collect all of that data and build it into a dashboard as well, so that I can see things like, how long does each of these steps take? Does that vary by order type? Um, do we have a particular bottleneck in a particular part of the process that we need to dive into? And to Alex's point earlier on the call, you can really tie those kind of financial um, metrics back to the work it took um, to get there, to give a better better view and, and visibility into to your operations. That's great, Henry. Thanks so much for sharing. Yeah, no problem. So we got one question right now um, on vSimple, which we'll just take um, for the sake of time. Uh, so it's from Carolyn, and they're wondering, does vSimple automation work with QuickBooks Enterprise um, based on Right Networks, which is a cloud hosting um, platform for a lot of QuickBooks users, uh, versus QuickBooks Online? Um, so I know that Mid Florida uses QuickBooks Desktop. Um, it's enterprise, enterprise, enterprise. So okay. enterprise on right network. So, um, but we connect using methods. So we're, we're not connected directly to QuickBooks. We connect to method and then back to QuickBooks. Right. So just to, just to be clear there, vSimple right now doesn't connect directly to QuickBooks enterprise, but we do that through our method integration. 
Exactly. And Carolyn, too, if you're wondering, Method does also have some sort of integration with Write Networks. Um, I got to double check exactly what it was so I can send you a follow up email in case that's helpful. Um, but yeah, our teams do work really closely together with the folks at Write Networks. So um, thanks so much for your question. Hope that helps. Um, great, and we're going to get to a raffle and formal Q&A in just a few minutes. Um, before we do, though, just a quick word on method. So kind of where we're best at is, again, extending the power of QuickBooks um, for users that are kind of, you know, growing their business and seeing the limitations of that software. Kind of our specialty is automating, you know, the quote to cash workflow, so kind of um, pre-sales stuff to payment uh, were really helpful in terms of any kind of customer management, lead management, all that kind of stuff that you want to get into. Uh, we're here to help you with that. And then of course we are a no-code platform. So if you do have other needs that you want to personalize the solution to, other you know, forms of workflow automation, uh, we're well equipped to do that as well. So if you want to check us out, feel free to start. We have a 14-day free trial right now um, and you can start that at method.me. And with that, I'll pass it over to Alex to hear a little bit more about Be Simple. Yeah, thank you. I, I shared a little bit uh, in the intro, but you know what Be Simple really is tackling is that cross-departmental workflow that doesn't have a natural home, be it a CRM or uh, an accounting software, warehouse management system. Um, what we build is is mission control. It's task and stage management, documentation. We'll we'll build in escalations and automations. Um, safety nets, meaning, hey, if something's been sitting there too long, we'll notify the right people, we'll set up views so that people are only working on the things that are most important and need attention. Um, you know, I always use the analogy of your email inbox, uh, which a lot of people use to manage their workday, doesn't prioritize things for you, doesn't tell you if there's a task or action item associated with it, certainly doesn't give you any reporting. Um, and that's what we do. We take those uh, daily operations and we put them in somewhat of a digital assembly line. So, um, you know, we are industry and process agnostic. We do a lot of work in the material handling industry with companies like Mid Florida uh, Material Handling, but um, it can be anything from engineering to sales to customer service to HR, employee onboarding, um, AP processing. Um, we, we find a way to configure our tool, you know, back to the no code uh, comment to uh, tackle business operation challenges. Um, and, you know, we appreciate the opportunity to, to share what we do here. Thanks so much. All right, we've got a question we can tackle in the meantime. Um, Schuler is wondering, does Method or vSimple have a marketing component like MailChimp? Um, so I can maybe start with Method's um, kind of take on that. So Method does have some marketing uh, capabilities. The automation in terms of marketing is not as strong, I would say, as MailChimp out of the box. You can definitely customize the workflow to enhance that. But what we offer out of the box is an email campaigns app um, that you can you know, send mass emails um, kind of to your contact lead customer database um, that you have stored in Method. Um, not sure if vSimple offers anything. Uh, and Method also integrates with MailChimp as well. Um, so Henry, Alex, anyone want to tackle that? Sure. I can I can take that one. We do not have um, like email marketing built into the the vSimple platform, but we can send a one-off email. So some of our customers that are using us to manage um, all of their ordering process, for example, might have an automation in vSimple that says, "Hey, send the customer an order confirmation when it gets to this stage," or send them a delivery update if somebody adds a delivery date. So we can do kind of those one-off emails, but not the giant blasts out to a, to a list that I think you're probably thinking of. Um, Schuler says thanks. Again, if there's any questions, we do have a time here to answer them. The one thing we do for marketing teams that I'll add there is, um, you know, campaign planning. If you think about trade shows and events or, you know, anything that requires a lot of coordination, we can similarly build those processes into vSimple. Um, internally facing it, to Henry's point, it's not really a, an outbound prospecting tool or anything like that, but uh, we do work with marketing teams on some, some campaign planning and management. 
All right, do, do, do. let me see if there's any other questions here. So again, if you do wanna share this webinar recording with anyone, uh, you'll be getting it in your inbox in the next couple of days, so keep an eye out for that. And again, um, all the presenters here are always happy to have more eyes on our content, so feel free to share it. All 